Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. So the E7 YouTube Cup continues, this time with the Emperor Bracket. The format will be exactly the same as the Legend Bracket. For Game 1 and Round 1, we have STG, sponsored by Kana against Hidden Darkness, sponsored by myself. Game 2 is Alito22, sponsored by Dr. Squirrel, against Patford, who is sponsored by Deity. Game 3 is White Base, sponsored by Zodi Atma, against Cashberry Mari, who is sponsored by Valk. And the final game is Late Input, sponsored by Car 6, against City who is sponsored by Shotgun Shogun. So we're going to show you all the matches for round one of the Emperor Bracket today. And over the next week or two, we're going to finish up this bracket for the tournament. Uh, the previous bracket, the Legend Bracket, the winner there was Aether Bulge, and he will face the winner of this bracket uh, to determine who gets the trophy. And that match will be a best of five. So all of these matches will be best of three, just like the Emperor Bracket. Let's go ahead and get into the matches. Before we do, though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And also see the video description below for a link to my Discord. Hey everyone, this is Mace1370. We are here for the last Hassan versus STG, or 2027 match. Uh, last Hassan is going to be the player I am sponsoring. I'm here with Kana, and he is sponsoring STG. Alright, here we go. Game 1. Alright, looks like Last Hassan has gotten first pick. Yeah, and so I know both of these players, unlike a lot of the other players, I think haven't spent quite as much time playing uh, RTA. I know uh, my, my sponsor player in particular has definitely not put nearly as much time into the game, but that's okay because uh, we're going to start it off with, ooh, Apocalypse Robbie first pick from Last Hassan. And that's um, interesting with a RAN pre-ban. Usually, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of want to go into an aggressive draft if you're first picking APOC. Yeah. And, okay, so this is something that I think we've seen an okay amount of. I think especially now that everything is unlocked, like Ed and Moon Bunny and all the characters are uh, available for use. Uh, there is... There has been a good amount of like uh, continued DN priority, and mm -hmm. Conquer Lilius maybe uh, has dropped a little bit in priority, but that could also just be due to the playstyle of the players and you know some of the other tournaments that are going on at the moment. But uh, as you can see, what remains to be kind of standard from you know any play is the Mediator Karak and the Apocalypse Robbie as kind of like this opening flex, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess with third pick available it's really up to hassan how how he wishes to continue but the alencia i think mm -hmm. is very very um it's very neutral i guess but also very strong into a lot of what um should we call stg um SG, stg's right side team is uh i guess has presented uh you know Alencia does well into the DN, and just in general, she isn't very weak to a lot of units, except for, I guess, perhaps the Hua Young, which is... Yeah, she's definitely weak to Hua. To yeah, and this is like, you know, the first match with just a single pre-ban from both players, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it'd be hard for Lastisan to take Hua Young in this spot, because it looks like STG is taking the first turn, you know, and you have to worry about, like, Opsig getting boosted or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now, the right team the is really vulnerable shoot, to things right? like Politus and, you know, units that uh, interact with the non-combat skills, but it doesn't look like Last Hassan is picking any of those up. Yeah, and I, uh, what I was going to mention is that I think that he's just electing to go with the, I think, the kind of most popular bruisers nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. You see the Alencia and the Shu, both notorious, I think, for boxing out a lot of the other... Um, utility knight bruiser units in the game and oh a very interesting last pick with the d uh the designer lilibet yeah hmm. hmm i don't know how i feel about the designer lilibet i understand that he probably wants this as a force ban um or as a way for the conqueror lilius not to press any buttons here but i don't know if stg really has to I guess interact with the pick at all and it from yeah. what I can see now it looks like even more so um STG is priming himself to I guess just ban the uh the designer a little bit and kind of take out Les Hassan's team in one turn yeah I think uh that's a hand guy ban interesting hmm well the Ida will be able to cut here 
You know, you can S three S two on Conqueror and push back the designer Lilibet, and Ida will get the turn before Lilibet does. Yeah, and yeah, normally you would be concerned about like uh, using the skill three here, but assuming that he pushes back the designer Lilibet, and with the combined push that using non attack skills gives to Ida here, um, I think he's perfectly fine to just unload onto the, yeah. the designer Lilibet for sure, right? And even more so now, she's about to get pushed back, and I think this might. This looks a little bit scary for Last Hassan because ultimately this team is going to. Oh! Oh, XTD. Oh, sure. Ooh! Oh, oh no! And she dies turn one! Uh, we call this the Guild War maneuver. <laughs> so, so. I hate that XTD. Is... I hate this unit so much. <laughs> So, 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 all right, all right, all right. So what will we, that is really unfortunate. Um, there was a wasted burn there, of course. Yeah. Um, but the one kind of saving grace for STG here is that realistically, um, the Specter Tenebria and this, um, and this Hua Young. Spe Lilia's Specter's going to do a lot of damage here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah see, I, I definitely agree. I think Hassan knows that. So he's just ripping the skill three because Apoc is dead. Oh, and it does like virtually nothing actually to this team or, or to this conquer lilius on skill three but I v think vigor he's... and attack break it's a broken combination yeah and i think he might just decide oh okay oh he's deciding he's electing to go for the for the shoe here instead yeah, think... of the the oh, um huh. well i was thinking that he would do is stun the alencia i guess and, uh, prevent apoc has used her skill three so yeah, yeah. I think that's a valid line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and even though there is the defense buff, uh, I guess basically placed up here on the uh, on the whole team, I don't know if that's enough because, like, as you can see here, the, the dual attacks from Spectre Shinebria, Conquer Lilius are putting in a lot of work, and yeah, maybe if the designer Lilibet S3 kills the Spectre Shinebria, he would be in a worse spot. Oh, and it, but it does, actually. Ooh, this looks really yeah. bad actually for STG now. I think this really came down to that shoe counter because there would have been an additional Eda skill three right into this whole team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I uh, think even yeah. tuning wise, he he probably would have been fine, right? Um, just dealing with the uh, with the rest of the units. I mean, not even taking into consideration how much damage he probably would have um, gained uh, across the board. And the stuns too, but you know maybe the stuns wouldn't have mattered because of designer a little bit. But it definitely feels like in this position, um, a lot of these. Oh, it, oh, when it crits, oh, but it misses on the second. But I don't know if that's enough actually to, yeah, to deal with this team. There's too much for Hua to get through here, I think. Yeah, a, a little unfortunate, I think. But Ooh, and I guess if maybe there's the double miss it might do enough but i think it's no, probably gonna crit. Crit. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's that's all she wrote <clears throat> yeah all right so last us on takes game one yep thanks to shu <laughs> one of my least favorite units in the game right now yep that you know i i'd always thought about that right like i know it it really did look like free real estate for ida right to just use yeah three she had vigor and I almost thought, I was almost thinking to myself that, you know, if you did the attack down and you had the vigor, uh, like, I know that Shu doesn't scale very well with attack, but I thought yeah. that with the attack break and, and vigor combo, even if it had decided to proc and from the S1 to the S2, it wasn't even like the Ida died to S1 and S2 damage. It was simply the proc yeah. on S2 yep. that killed her from full. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so Politus and Bellion are now both banned out. Yeah, and I think maybe, I think STG might actually run it back. Uh, last is on picking the Apocalypse Ravi up again, but it's really, I don't really know if, if STG has to respect the pick so much, because really that last game, I think was very, was very STG leaning until that shoe yeah. um, decided to counter, right? Um, and it wasn't even, you know, like... Uh, I guess you could call it like about average RNG, but um, that that first or like the placement of the counter 
Right, it wasn't on like a. Well, I think like it was Ida's... really bad RNG because you have to before she used skill threes. Her only line to get that attack is the counter proc, right? So you need the thirty percent chance to counter, and then once yeah. you get that, you need the you know the exclusive equipment chance to proc your S two mm -hmm. on top of that. So and both yeah. of those things had to happen for STG to lose. Yeah, sorry. I, what I meant was more so like from from like presumably the rest of the match like i don't think she can oh right that yeah much after the fact yes but, yeah you're correct uh, i definitely mean that like uh, yeah i definitely think that in the heat of the moment he was probably a little frustrated and that's yeah. why i thought the actual um the timing of it was so was so unfortunate to be honest yeah um but stg deciding to mix things up now mm -hmm. and taking the mediator away from hassan um i think that means hassan's going to have to play a, or show his cards a little earlier but he takes the AOL here, which I don't think is a bad pick. Even when you're playing into hand guy, they kind of check each other, right? Like neither one wants to skill three. And this also threatens the Deanna bit. And then here's the Alencia pickup. Yeah. And so Alencia obviously really nice into the, uh, both as a way to strip the DN buffs and potentially the mediator Cowork buffs. Mm -hmm. um, but at, like, as we've seen time and time again, uh, this unit is really, really good at, again, kind of playing this neutral opening where, especially if your first pick like um, like Last Hassan is, um, it's kind of an it's kind of just to your advantage that you're allowed to kind of hide your really committal picks into full uh, until the fourth and fifth pick, whereas uh, STG here kind of has to um, show most of what his team comp is going to be about to Hassan. And then, unfortunately, only hide one pick, which a lot of the times just gets banned out anyway, right? Um, yeah, and I was wrong earlier. I said Belly, and it was Huang that was banned in addition to Politis. So Alencia is a much mm -hmm. safer pick here. Yeah, you know, I was really hoping that Ed was going to be a, a viable fire bruiser counter to Alencia. Uh, that mm -hmm. hasn't really panned out. So <laughs> yeah, I don't. I uh, yeah, I don't know how much. Um... Well, the 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 worst part about it, right, is that. Aside from, like, Ed's damage, potentially, right? Alencia, or, you know, if people are trying to utilize Ed's skill 2, which I know a lot of people are fixating on, uh, you really can't, um, you really can't utilize the skill 2 because you would have to have the Alencia hit Ed and then defense break, which is also, I mean, right. like, you know, it's kind of like a, like a check that you have to go through, and mm -hmm. then you could maybe debuff the Alencia, but... Uh, we actually see the uh, the solitaria here, which is, I think, a little bit interesting. Um, there are two cleansers for STG side, um, and maybe he's just thinking of a more neutral pick that can't get hit. I think he might be trying to block to. off the arc demon. I think he's predicting mm. an arc demon last pick. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, arc demon would be pretty good if you uh, if you see like the Alencia and the Apocalypse Ravi and the angel of light right um mm -hmm. all units i think kind of um don't punish the archdemon nearly as well as someone like why young or specter genebria i'm not sure but, about this amelia last pick though because yeah, last think... Hassan is going to be potentially playing either solo alencia or solo apoc mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh but oh but is this a i i I can't tell. Oh, it is the Arch Demon actually, and I mean, this okay. just has to be the Quick Solitaria ban, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this paid off. Yeah, and he really is not threatened by that Amelia at all. Um, well, now now I think the Amelia has value because STG picked the Arch Demon. You know, this is a... Yeah. Amelia can cleanse away those seals. So I don't think that Lastisan has to ban out the Arch Demon. Oh, he does anyway, though. Oh. Hmm. hmm. I would have maybe so, banned Hand Guy, or not Hand Guy. I'm sorry, um, Adventure Ross, because you're kind of low he, damage, right? Yeah, and the other thing is that, I mean, there aren't really any, any like super big damage dealers from Last Hassan, and there are like two really big meat walls with a healer yeah. on STG side. Um, so the Spectre Tenebria really should be sitting happy, and there really isn't even. I mean, there is going to be a defense buff coming up soon from the Alencia, uh -huh. but there isn't a, you know, a an anti crit or anything like initially to stop the Spectre Tenebria from unloading her first S three into either the Angel of Light or the Apocalypse Ravier. 
Um, I guess whatever SCG deems to be the biggest threat here. But actually, he does push up the Alencia, potentially to skill 3. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think the problem here with Last to Sans draft is he does not really have reach for the Spectre. And mm. because of that, STG is going to have a lot of time to build up souls and, you know, just take over the match that way, start soul burning Ras, you know, just getting a lot of value. I think STG, uh, I think STG might have been debating whether or not he, I guess, if whether he wanted to... I guess punch up or I guess use the skill two here. The Angel of Light obviously hasn't used her skill three yet. So, ooh, and I guess she's, yeah, I guess the, the both of them are just holding it, right? The Meteor yeah. hasn't used skill three yet and the um, the Angel of Light is refusing to use skill three until the cleanse is down, but, oh, that's kind of an unimportant dual attack, I suppose, but uh, still nice uh, with the potential chance of being able to um, either stun the Apocalypse Robby from some damage. Yeah. Oh, but it's actually resisted. Mm, I guess Apocalypse Robby's turn one was not going to be super impactful anyway. But I think every little bit of health that this DN can kind of set away and, you know, prevent from... Or, like, I guess, rather, as much sustain as DN can provide or last... Uh, will be very valuable to STG's team because really what SCG feels like he's waiting for here is just frenzy and soul generation, right? Like kind of as you mentioned Ooh, before. Ooh, that and... almost killed. Ooh, and it's so close to proccing too. And this DN well, got defense broken, right? Yeah. So that's kind of huge. Mm. I wonder how much effective uh, effect resistance the DN has. Yeah, and... It is a little unfortunate because, again, Dien or the Angel of Light still not um, electing to using the electing to use the skill three. But oh, it looks like it looks like STG is deciding actually to take uh, take the offensive and try to take out the Angel of Light early. But I think you could have used skill three on Angel there just to strip that barrier off the Dien, and that ensures yeah. you kill. But I mean, maybe you kill anyways. Yeah, it looks like Ooh, you kill anyways. I, I guess. Yeah, this is. I think this is definitely going to be the kill, right? And mm, it that's problematic is, for STG. Yeah, this doesn't look good for STG. Now, granted, um, the mediator has a new skill team, but is using it now. Um, he does remove, or the mediator Kalrick no longer has the anti crit, which is kind of important because now, uh, even if um, STG decides to kill um, any of. Uh, last Hassan's units there's now more of a more of a chance for a lot of these targets to uh, be revived through the apocalypse Robbie skill three but um, the real question will be how much damage can the Spectre Geneva unload and he's he's deciding to just go for it obviously he committed the um, the angel of light s3 and uh, now this doesn't is gonna, kill AOL, this is though. it's gonna come out right yeah like if he killed AOL he could have prevented the skill three mm-hmm um Ooh, interesting interestingly though, the Adventurer Raz does have his anti crit still available. However, I think he is going to probably um he's probably going to cut here, right? And he's going to lose it. But um This is I think what's really going to be the the difference maker might be the that's what I was gonna say, it might have been the defense break and it's Ooh. dead! Oh, and I think that might have shifted things into SCG's favor a bit more. Um, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Hassan was expecting his, or well, I guess he was kind of praying that his, his, um, his Apocalypse Robbie didn't get skilled, uh, death broken by the skill two from Adventure of Raz, because now it looks like, for all intents and purposes, this, this Spectre Geneva should be able to kill, unless uh, if she dies to this Alencia skill three. If this, yeah, kills Spectre. It is attack buff. Ooh, oh, Liz. but it's not enough. And and now it's the defense. Oh, but there's a resist. <laughs> this just oh, goes back my. and forth. Yeah, and oh, but the oh, but the Amelia died from from the S one even with defense buff, and I mean that's yeah. that's game two. Yep, STG takes game two, so we're gonna get a game three here. Wow! 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 Uh, that that was real. That was actually on a nice edge. Oh man, what a match between uh, STG and Hassan. I mean, 
you know, we're going to see game three. And I'm curious if maybe maybe any of the players change up their bands, maybe an Apocalypse Rob, your respected Chenebria, something something taken away, maybe Mediator. But, um, hmm. For, you, you know, something interesting that I that I noticed too, I think, has, has STG been giving Hassan, um, first pick? Did he have first pick last game? I last game paying. he was second pick because I made I'm. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, had an error. Uh, hopefully that first bit recorded. Yeah, and uh, I mean even um, even in this match, uh, we we kind of noted uh, maybe <laughs> if if the footage is still there that um, there might have needed to be like a change in kind of the priority of units and maybe there would be a bit more target banning. But it looks like. Um, STG here now using the newly released, or I guess, I mean, fairly newly released, uh, Moon Bunny Dominiel as a response to the Spectre Tenebria, or I guess just in, in general, if I'm... In response right, to the yeah, Conqueror think, Lilius, yeah. Yeah, the Conqueror Lilius, which I think is a very nice, um, option into her. Um, I think, especially if you can afford immunity on the Moon Bunny Dominiel, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of forces you into a bad spot where you can't really S2 or S3 without getting, um... You know, or without S twoing or S threeing the Moon Bunny, without basically wasting your turn, right? Um, but now we have the FCC on three from Hassan, and I think STG is considering maybe the Operator Secret. Yeah, I would be considering it for sure. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, hard for Last Hassan to stop that. You already have one, you know, attack uh, buffing CR booster, right? That can protect it. Um, yeah. You can pick up another one. Uh, wait. Oh, but the Sid! I don't like that Sid pick. I don't like the Sid pick either. I'm, I'm a bit confused what this is all about. And are we? Oh, Sid, Pera. Something tells me that he's trying to ban the Fallen Cecilia, but mm -hmm. now it kind of feels like if Hassan decides to tank down a little bit more, maybe pick an Adventurer Raz or, um, like maybe even an Eaton plus another a solo carry it, it kind of feels like stg is going to be in a bad spot right like maybe stg is um, in a very a awkward Mandy? spot because you you already have a dps here that sid can't get to and mm -hmm. now hassan knows you know what he has to face right he can face the top four he can pick dps you know units that are not threatened by a sid or mm -hmm. by uh sorry green sid and now what i think is actually the most oh and uh, and the assassin mm -hmm. Sid, I think, is is kind of unbannable if you think about the way that STG wants to play this match out. Because I think STG really wants to ban out the Fallen Cecilia and the assassin Sid. Um, you can kind of uh, argue that it would be fine for STG to deal with the Conqueror Lilius, right? Because you have the Para, and maybe like the uh, the Para gives out um, like enough buff or enough attack to the Green Sid to kill, but. STG actually already banning out his pick. I'm assuming hmm. that. I'm I think assuming STG's that... banning the Ace Sid. And I thought that Ooh. Last Hassan was banning Moon Bunny based on the way he was picking. Hmm. I think. I guess. I guess the Eda really would bypass the, the Dill a bit, but I'm a little worried about the Eda ban. Ooh, but that's kind of what I was thinking. Hmm. So if. If SCG has enough damage to to kill both the Conqueror Lilius and the Acid in one turn, I think that means that the the I guess like basically the rest of the team can kind of clean house, right? Like even even tempo wise. Oh, and it actually is the it actually is the the pair that goes first, but I don't. I actually don't know what's going to happen here because the Sid is nowhere near enough, actually, yeah. in terms of speed. I guess this cut. is a slower damage Sid, but how is he going to get a turn if he's just dead? Yeah, I'm not really sure what exactly the plan was here. Um, hmm. He's burning just to be on... safe. I don't think he needed to burn that. but Yeah, I don't think he needed to either. And even with this skill 3, um, I... I think SCG was kind of contem was kind of contemplating whether or not he'd want to press it, but I mean, ultimately, even with this, uh, oh, actually, Hassan Hassan is deciding to pop the vigor. Yeah. I guess forcing STG into kind of a 
50-50 with the um with the assassin Sid here, I think. Yeah. Right? Instead of Oh, but even if he revives the the Sid, I don't know if that's gonna be enough because he would have to he would have to kill the assassin Sid here. Yeah, he has to wait oh. he has to wait a cycle and then maybe go for it. Yeah. I mean, I guess there isn't the there is no threat of a an attack buff, um, Specter Geneva or anything. But actually, the Moon Bunny Dominial is already dead. Ooh. Oh, that's a oh, duel. Oh, the dual attack. I that, think is that doesn't help. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. I think this and might that's be a it for super STG. Tanky conquer Lilius too. Ah, uh, there were you. Uh, this this assassin Sid would. Or the, this green Sid would have to do so much damage. So he does get to kill the the, the assassin, assassin Sid, Sid with skill three. But let's see. Do you just rip it on the conqueror? No I vigor. Think... It has barrier. Mm. I don't know if he would. Oh, and he even got the best kill here. I think maybe. I mean, it has to kill here, right? Like yeah. you have to be able to skill three onto the. Onto the um, onto the conqueror, but I don't, don't even know if that's enough. Oh, and it's not. It only does thirteen thousand. Oh, I guess you don't know how much defense this conqueror has. Uh, there's a shot that you could kill it. I mean, because yeah, I, 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 mean, I don't the, think you ever win right f with the green city. Yeah. There, so I don't know, but good match. Uh, it looks like yeah, last Asan yeah. will continue on. Kana, thank you very mm -hmm, much for yeah. hanging out. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks again for the Emperor round of, uh, of this match. Um, hey, sorry, I apologize that my screen was transitioning. But yeah, thanks again for, uh, thanks again for hosting this. Always GG's as all, uh, as always. Yeah. Um, pretty exciting matches. Cool. Yes, I will talk to you later. All right, take it easy. Hey everyone, this is Mace1370. I am here with Dr. Squirrel for the Patford versus Alito match. You can go ahead and get started. Uh, Dr. Squirrel, you want to say hi? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, not going to bother introducing myself because we did several times, but um, I'm sponsoring Alito 22. And uh, Deity. Yeah, sorry about yeah. that. Deity's sponsoring uh, Patford, but he couldn't make it. So. All right. I guess Patford gets pick one and opens with Politus. So I don't know if you've ever met Patford on the letter, Dr. Squirrel. I've not played against Alito. Um. I've seen Patford a bunch of times. It was a long time ago, and I don't really remember his playstyle. Although I gotta say, Politus' first pick is pretty weird. So I guess they're both considering Cleave because they both pre-banned Lion here. Yeah, Patford is, I think, almost exclusively a Cleave player, and he really like he Cleave cleaves. You know, there's no like shifting around or anything like that. It's just pretty much he's gonna cleave. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> You know, I know Politus is a big problem for a lot of those particular types of playstyles, so, you know, he likes to first pick it, I think, to, you know, just take it off the table. It looks like Alita, though, is shifting into a more defensive draft. The Designer Lilibet and Ball, you know, are two really big staples for dealing with uh, Ran type aggressive drafts. Although, if Ran soul burns, he can put Stigma on Ball, and the Stigma plus the passive from Politus will prevent Ball from moving up the CR bar at all. I think Patford probably needs another fast initiator, though otherwise Rain just gets banned out and then he auto-loses, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs something else to push his team up here. Pira or Conquer and Ida or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patford is having to deal with Ball and Apoc Ravi, so that's kind of like the nightmare scenario for Cleave players, I feel like. Okay, if this is... I was going to say if that's a fast Ooh. landing, that could do it. Faithless Lytic is an interesting pick. Are people running their fast, though? Or I've seen a few, and most of them have been DPS, like 250-ish mm -hmm. DPS. I think that's more than normal, but, you know, Patford's more of a speed demon, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was just fast. Is Patford's gear premium? Like, I usually remember Cleavers just because um, I like to be able to deal with them early. I don't remember him that much. He's um, he's free to play, but he's been playing since the, I think the game was released. And I, I think he's gotten pretty lucky with gear overall. 
um, especially speed gear. Like, he's not as fast as I am, but he's pretty close, which is pretty impressive for being free to play. All right, so if this Flitica is a fast one, this might be problematic. Yeah, the Rand's out. You still have Politus preventing, you know, the team from pushing up. Uh, I was a little surprised at that. I guess, yeah, the Dilibet got banned too, so they kind of read each other correctly there. Man, uh, Faithless Lydica Seedom, when was the last time we saw that? Ooh, double resist on the bombs, though. Oh, that's uh, very unfortunate. Well, good for me, because I'm rooting for Alito, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I played a ton of Caesarea in, I think, like, Season 5, and seeing those bombs get resisted is just incredibly painful. <laughs> so I guess reset into a Ravi here, probably. Mm-hmm. This is probably a D-Gen Arbiter. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to ignore the Arbiter for now and try to hit down it with Politus. Yeah, and try to get blind on RB. Yeah, he'll have blind and attack down, so this first S3 will probably not hurt too much, but at some point RB's going to get that second one. Oh wow, that just killed the RB. Alright, well that's good for Patford because he has the skill nulls, right? Oh, the gab. Those skill nulls are going to screw him over, though. So it's not a degen RB. No, yeah, that's actually pretty squishy. Man, I remember. The Ravi can't do anything because she's going to explode the next turn anyway. Mm hmm. So it looks like Patford takes game one. The uh, uh, thing with Faithless Lydica is like. She was such a powerhouse back in the day, and she kind of got crept out of the meta just because her base speed was slow. Uh, but she was just a terror to play against. Yeah, I mean, when did she come out? Around Season 2, I want to say? It, it was, yeah, way back there. And she was bad when she first got released, and then they buffed her, and I think they gave her uncounterable on her S2, which was, I think, the big thing. Funny how much speed has come. Like back then, like what, what's their base like 160? Like that was fast enough back in the day. Mm -hmm. Now, like anything under like 120 is not enough. Yep, it's just a turtle. So both. So Alito is actually. I talked to him before this match, and he actually prefers playing Cleave too. Huh. So uh, he might be trying to counter Cleave here now. Yeah, the Sid Silk is a popular pickup. You know, when you're trying to speed race, you oftentimes see it come out against the Ran, but it's good into Politus too. You know, we have um, Apoc on Alito's side, so he has the anchor. I guess Patford is going to try to race him. I think he'll be down an imprint though, right? Because he was second pick? Yeah. Angel of Light. Hmm. I was expecting more speed imprints. Yeah, so this Gloomy Rain is a book holder and a speed imprint. And other than that, I don't know what she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen her, to be honest. I think, If I remember correctly, I think she has a mechanic where she can like get extra turns. I don't remember how she gets them, though. So she can take like five turns in a row if like the conditions, if she procs enough, but it's pretty RNG for that to happen. I'm assuming Alito banned the Acid, unless he really wanted to get rid of like one of the imprints, like Vildred. Yeah, you oftentimes see these speed racers, just each player bans the fastest imprint. So you'd see like a Silk and a Shuri ban, but... Yeah. Yep, so I guess we're going to see the who goes here first here. Yeah. That Acid, if it's anything over 300, I don't think... Alito wins the speed race. Because I know that's a DPS Sid. That's not a 300 speed Sid. Yeah. Looks like yeah, Acid so yeah, Acid takes first turn. So that's a dead Pavel. Yeah, 
Yeah, this might just be uh unless he fifteen percent the death break on a Ravi and bring something back. Zero fifteen percent. not. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Alito is big dead now. Yeah, it is a proof a Ravi, but with death break and the S two, I don't think it matters. There's no other mitigation here. Yeah, with death break, um, yeah, they're just dead. Didn't even have to S two. Well, All right, those were well. pretty fast matches. Um, <laughs> thanks very much, you know, for participating in the tournament. Um, I guess Patford will continue on to the next round, but it was great having you. Yep, and uh, thanks to Alito, and I apologize to him because um, he was asking me about Patford, and I didn't remember him, so I actually told Alito he's probably a standard player, and I was clearly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, anyways, thanks, Alito, and uh, congrats, Patford. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye, guys. Hey everyone, this is Mace1370. We are here for the Cash Berry Mary match versus White Base. So this will be part of the Emperor bracket. And unfortunately, the commentators uh, for these two had to go to bed, uh, kind of a strenuous schedule. So it'll just be me commentating on this one, but that's okay. So Cash Berry Mary gets the first pick. He's in Verite, a sister guild for Veritas, and White Base is in Midgard. I believe Zodi Atma sponsored White Base, and Valk sponsored Cash Berry Mary. Uh, both players have pre-banned AOL, and Conqueror Lilius comes out first, which is, I think, pretty predictable. You know, we have Moonlight Dominial in the meta now, but Conquer Lilius can still be a strong first pick. White Base is responding with Apoc Ravi and Mediator Calric, which I think is a pretty good response to that. It lets you flex a bit into a more, you know, tanky defensive style draft. Vigor buff from Conquer Lilius, though, provides just a ton of... Oh, and it looks like my screen is off center here, so let's fix that. Sorry about that. I don't know how that got moved. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, Vigor Buff provides just a ton of, you know, gear score for the uh, other team, and, and that's a lot to overcome. Huayang also is going to just deny a lot of, you know, very basic bru bruiser picks, and then you have Alencia as well, so a pretty strong start from Cashberry Mary. White base has picked Moonlight Dominial, which is an uh, interesting pick here. I think that could throw a wrench in Conquer Lilius' plans. If Moonlight Dominial is not on immunity, she could just get provoked, but the mediator here would be able to cleanse that away, probably. Alright, and then a Spectre Tenebria from White Base. That's interesting. So I think if. Cashberry Mary is able to aggress into this, he should be able to take the game since Spectre Tenebria is, you know, pretty vulnerable there without an Aureus or, you know, some sort of protecting mitigation. Alright, looks like he's gonna flex into a more defensive draft with Bellion and Fallen Cecilia. That's interesting. So presumably this Bellion is on injury set, and if Valencia is also on injury set, then this Apoc Ravi might be pretty neutered. Okay, yeah, Opsig ban is pretty predictable given the fact that there's a bunch of shields from FCC and from Huayang. Uh, and, you know, Cash doesn't really have a great way to, you know, get that Opsig out of stealth in the beginning of the match, so she would probably, you know, delete some units. And then a Conquer Lilius ban, even though White Base took the, you know, the Dominial there. So I think this is probably favored for Cashberry Mary since, you know, Spectre Tenebria and Apoc Ravi I think are going to have a really hard time breaking through the FCC and, you know, the Bellion and the Alencia. Like, these are three really tanky units, right? There's no defense breaks on White Base's team. So I, I suspect that Bellion is going to really just kind of grind this down. White base is able to take advantage of the fact that Alencia is not on immunity and there's no cleanse here, so Alencia is just going to get stunned. I think, yeah, the kick is going to go on to Mediator Calric. That makes sense. I, I think one way, potentially, the uh, team on the right here could win is if they're able to prolong the match a little bit and these immunities drop off, Moon Bunny Dominial could, you know, repeatedly sleep. Bellion, and then just grind down 
the Alencia. That, that's a possibility. Okay, attack break on Huayang, so she's going to do virtually no damage there. Here's a, a potential sleep, but didn't land. Bellion can push back and provoke here, uh, but Mediator's going to put up immunity soon. Since I don't think that... Yeah, not going to be able to finish him off with that. Maybe Alencia can finish the Mediator off? Ooh. Okay, well yeah, now Mediator's definitely dead. Okay, yeah, this is looking really bad for white base. I really like this uh, FCC pick here at the end, and the Bellion. I think that was a really strong response from Cash. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, Steny and Apoc can be, you know, nice grindy units when they need to be, but you have to give them support to let you, you know, get to the long game. And there's just no sustain on this side of the field. So I feel like they're not really going to be able to overcome, you know, the tank from left side. Yeah, now this is just a solo Apoc who's debuffed and, you know, facing down four other units. So I don't think much is going to happen here. Yeah, it's a kick into Hua, or a kick from Hua into Apoc, so I think round one here is going to get wrapped up. Yep, looks like Cash takes game one. Okay, White Base is going to take the first pick this game. So I would expect to see yeah, a Conquer Lilius pre ban from at least one of the players, and then a Bellion pre ban So both of these players are kind of angling to play aggressively, I think. Cashberry Mary seems to have a pre ban style similar to mine, where he will play the Conquer Lilius, but he doesn't want to play into it. Which, you know, I, that's how I've kind of approached this meta so far. I think Conquer with Vigor is just really tough to overcome. You know, you can do it, but... It doesn't seem like a favorable matchup for me. So first pick Apoc, which leaves white base open, you know, to respond to Cleave or to go into an aggressive draft. I think we're seeing more now that Apoc does not do super well into these kind of medium, like, tempo bruiser matches. So I think if you pick Apoc, you kind of want to go, you know, really aggressively, or you want your opponent to be going aggressive into you. So the Dien and Hua from Cash makes sense. And yeah, see here, white base is going to go with the Politus and the Ran. So I like that. Uh, a common response to this is Silk Sid. But it looks like Cash is going to opt to go defensively instead with the designer Lilibet. And is he picking up FCC here? I think that's a strong pick. You really want to get rid of this FCC if you're white base, but you have to contend with the final pick as well because right now you don't have a ton of damage on your side. The Politus will allow you to use Rand's skill 3 though, and it will prevent the designer from cutting, assuming both of those make it through. So we're going to see a Bunny Dominial again, and an Ida. But see, here's, here's the problem with this draft, is Ida gets banned out, and then there's no damage from right side. And then that's an Acid. So this is, I think, a pretty a pretty good draft from Cash. And I don't know if White Base is going to be able to get this. Because I'm expecting an Ida ban here. And, you know, he may have to Greed and just ban the FCC. Yeah, he bans the Acid. But I, I think you have to honestly ban the FCC and just pray that you're faster and that you can delete with Ran, right? And Because that, that gives you value off of your Ran. Now you have kind of an awkward situation where you can ran skill 3, but you don't really have much of a bridge. You know, you have Moon Bunny Dominial to boost up your team, but Politus is uh, still not going to take a turn. 
I guess it would kind of deny DN a skill. We'll see. He might be able to pull something out. I'm just anticipating not enough damage here. You know, Dien could even just skill two and wipe away all the defense breaks, and then Politus is just not going to do enough. And yeah, Rand doesn't even press buttons here, but I, I think you all kind of have to. So Dien skips her turn here. She, you don't want to lose immunity on your characters, right? Just get rid of the skill null. Politus has attack buff, but look, you're going into FCC, your Hua and your FCC have immunity. Soul burning, I don't... Yeah, I don't think that's going to really do anything. I think White Base had to skill 3 with Ran and try to close something out because there's no sustain on White Base's team, right? I mean, Huayang is just going to uh, slowly grind this down. So you could just kill the Politus here so you can start pressing skills. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing. The skill 1 is a reasonable uh, choice there on the Hua, rather than using your skill 3. Uh, you can probably kill the Politus here with FCC and Designer Lilibet. Um, you also prevent Apoc from you know just throwing out a skill 3 right off, you know, off the bat. And immunity is going to come off of Apoc next turn which means that she can probably get controlled. Oh, using the skill 3 here, I don't know if you necessarily need to do that. I guess he's trying to take down the Ran also, because he doesn't want to get defense broken. But with Politus dead, there's kind of like not much follow-up. Hmm. You know, because Apoc was all the way at the back. Yeah, this is not looking good for white base. Cash can just kill Dominial, and then, you know, there's really not much that Apoc can do, even if Apoc is able to bring back a character, which I, I doubt will be the case given anti crit and FCC on the field. And there's a bunch of skill nulls here as well. Okay, yeah, that's going to be it for Cash. What's going on, guys? I got the mace tourney lined up here. Me and Shogun have our Emperor sponsors. So my name is Carr, you already know. And I'm sponsoring Late Input, and we're fighting against Shogun. Shogun, how you doing today? And tell us who your player is. Yo, I'm doing pretty good. I actually don't know what city's uh, name translates to here, uh, but I'm Shogun Shogun, and I am sponsoring Vinny Light. That's right, City... Uh... City Vinny Light. Yeah, basically Vinny Light, yeah. Alright. So, uh, good luck, Lee Input. You're going up against uh, the Speed Lord, the Speed Lord wannabe. Oh, God. Okay, good luck, good luck. Let's get into it. <laughs> Here we go, boys. Rank 154, City. Almost, uh, almost breaking into the legend there. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of um, people from the Aoi Guild on Asia. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we see the Ran and the Blyan ban here. Uh, Blyan typically banned out against people who want to play Spectre's Nebria, want to play any sort of cleave. However, with the Ran out, that does limit the amount of cleave. Uh, City's so going to pick up the C Lilius here, and late input picking up the A Ravi, which is uh, very, very common. Both of these two first picks are, are pretty typical. Yep, very uh, safe, very versatile. Yep, the Magical Girl DN skin. Oh, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. We were talking about it, Shogun. The voice, um, the English voice is a lot different than the original, if you haven't heard it yet. Wait, hold on. People play this game with English voices? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Did I just self-report? Mm, yikers, yeah, that's... Listen, uh, that's some little... of the English voices hey. are good, man, okay? I'm not saying it's better or worse than Japanese, but um, some of them are good, okay? You know, something I've always wanted is the ability to flip on and off specific voices. I don't really like that. I, we actually were talking about that like a long time ago. All right, next few oh, picks yeah. are going in. Alencia and Crozet for City. Let's see what... So, uh, you know, wait. I really don't like the Trozet pick here because in terms of mitigators, right, Trozet is kind of greedy and you only really get one unit um, 
to to protect, right? Right. I feel like uh, unless you're going into Cleve, Trezette is a very very weird pick for a mitigator. Um, when A. Ross was still on the table, FCC was still on the table. There were a lot of other mitigators on the table, and late input picking up the A. Ross. Um, however, City does have the Alencia here, which is the natural predator of Apocalypse Ravi's. Um, going with the SSB here, kind of showing his hand that he's not really too worried about the Spectre's Nebri. He does need to pick another AoE here, or the Spectenny is going to probably have to be banned out. I love the SSB pick. Shogun, when you were, when you were talking about City, I wasn't expecting this kind of lineup. So, yeah, I wasn't actually expecting this, uh, this lineup really at all actually uh however it's kind of strong into late input right especially here with the last pick landy late input doesn't really have anything here to go into this landy other than the a ross s3 so if he were to hold the a ross s3 wait until the guiding light goes on to effect for the two turns breaks him out with the aoe Ooh. um obstacle with the bryceria last pick very interesting last pick i'm gonna say it's probably gonna be an ssb and potentially a spectenny ban if i had to if i had to guess let's see what they ban and also the t croza uh pick you were mentioning earlier got a little bit better with the bryceria last pick there access to that big cleanse yeah yeah no for sure yeah the, the but i agree the uh, it was weird to see a crozet this early when his opponent wasn't like full-on cleaving like you mentioned all right right bryceria and ssb are banned out Yep. So the one thing that um, that City's going to have to worry about here is he doesn't have a a shield to really keep this Landy in stealth. So if Lead Input picks up that uh, or goes with the A Ross into the Landy Guiding Light, that is going to break him out of Guiding Light for the two turns. So we'll see how that cycles back around. City goes for the provoke into the Roz. Which is good. It's likely that he's going to try to take and uh, deal with this Ross uh, via potentially a stun here. Not, a, not enough for the full power S3, but is going to be able to push forward. So we will see if the if he opts to try to stun this Ross to prevent the S3 coming out. Nope. Instead opting for the S3. So this will, the way that Lee inputs uh, lineup uh, here is this Spectre Tenebri is not going to be able to take out the Landy before the Aros is going to get to S3. So that was at least beneficial right there. Now, he's going to have to, see, I don't know if the ripping of the S3 here from the Alencia was really premature. the best choice. What yeah, do you think? He should have premature. held it for the DN S3? Yeah, absolutely, because you're going to have um, his, his tuning is a little bit weird here because the DN didn't S3. Uh, you're not going to have the DN coming back around for the Landy. However, uh, depending on what the Ross does here, he will still have the Landy full uh, full force S3, right? Right. So unless he to late input just raw S1s, which it does look like that's what he's going he to does. do to prevent that S3 to come through. Um this is going to keep his Spectre to Nebria alive for another turn because I do think that as soon as big ooh, dual attack, big dual attack, and that is a dead DN. Very unfortunate. And Barrier is yes. crossed. All right, so we do see the Soulburn S1, but it's not going to be nice enough. Nice little 15% on late side. Now, see, here's one of the problems that I find with the with the C. Lilius, right, is after the S3 and the S2, C. Lilius kind of just doesn't do much, right? You do have the, the S1 pulling in, but if you just pull in the Trezette, really doesn't do much there, right? And so until she gets to, you know, gets another S2, gets another S3, uh, she just kind of hangs out there, and typically, especially with the Trezette only protecting the Landy here, uh, you don't really have much going on. Ooh, we big do land the defense break. break. Not too impactful yeah. though, because we had that defense up from Valencia. Right, for sure. But uh, while you do kill the A Ross here, potentially, mm -hmm. um, she does crit. After the A Ross goes, 
away, this A Ravi has her pick of targets, right? She does have the debuff immu or uh, yeah, the debuff immunity here. The defense break is gonna shake off, but this is just gonna be a Ravi S3 into C Lilius. Uh, what does he need however, to bring back? The, uh, he needs to probably bring back the DN stabilize a little bit. Actually, I think that really it's kind of in shambles here. Because it is pretty rough, so he gets the Raws. He Could brings S3. back the Ross. Yeah, now he can S3 here, bring the Landy out, but the Landy only has one turn on the Guiding Light, so he will be able to Re potentially it. proc the Guiding yeah. Light. Goes with the S2 here, defense break that onto the Alencia is really big, yeah. However, Alencia is going to get to go before the A-Ravi, before the Ross, shake the defense break off here, and... Uh, it's actually not looking too bad on on the late input side. You do have the uh, dude. This Roz is getting hit Ross. by Earth every time. I don't think he's missed a single hit. A lot of 50 50s. Yeah. Now the big thing here, right, is that Ooh, late Mist's input's going to have to go through a Trezette and a Stealth yeah. Landy. So even though he kills the Alencia here, that's going to be a lot of turns. A before lot of turn that Robbie's going to get to S3 here. And while it might take a little while, uh, the the city side looking a lot stronger. Unless Griefing Light uh, ooh, even ooh, with that, that's going to lap all yeah. the way back around into the S3. This is going to be a soul burn just to clinch it up here. That should be it for game one. Yeah, with late input really holding that Ross S3, I think that when the, when the Ross came back, he needed to S3 in order to get his HP back and break the uh, Landy out of Guiding Light there. Um, I think I agree. The he, defense break into the Alencia was huge, but also Shogun, he just, yeah. the Raz got hit every time by the Landy and the Alencia. If you want a few more of those 50-50s, I think that S2 would have paid off more, but I think you're right in that situation. The health would have been pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, I mean, he, he would have put defense break or defense buff up. Um, and I, I think that it would have potentially allowed for him. He already had debuff immunity on the Ravi, Ravi yep. for one extra turn. So I think that having the defense break or the defense buff as well as the extra hit points would have been would have been a bit better of an option there. I agree. All right, I think they're both ready. If they're if it says I can start, we should be good to go. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. Good luck, boys. Zero one right now. City and Shogun are one up. Let's see if Team Car late input can bring it back here, get us to a game three. So City did go a little bit more standard there, which I feel like is very typical of tournaments. We've seen it in the Epic Seven World Cup uh, in pretty much every tournament. Whenever it's a best of three, whenever you actually have to like, you know, when it's not ladder and things are on the line, typically people aren't going to cleave. Now we might see a little bit more aggro. We see a double AOL ban out. Yeah. Um, but I'm expecting another fairly standard match. Late input this time is gonna get the C Lilius. Uh likely City's gonna probably pick up the A Ravi because well, you don't typically want to play against the A Ravi. However, it didn't work out too well for late input last time. Oh, early Going Politis. A Ravi into the Politis. Now, Politis is really good here because it means that late input can't press any buttons on that C Lilius. However, it picks up the I like that LHC. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty typical counter whenever you have a Politis or a Remaru or something along those mm -hmm. lines. Uh, this also prevents City from, from taking picking it. up the LHC exactly. as well. Yep. And with the A Ross, that allows for a little bit more survivability for the LHC because if you bring something along the lines of a Rimuru, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bad time for the LHC we because little... it's just going to bop it. Right, right. The Bunny Dom comes out. You mentioned we want to see a little more we might see a little more aggression here and that's a great yeah. pick into the Silius. Yeah, now I know that a lot of people when Bunny Dom was uh, was shown whenever she came out, mm -hmm. everyone was like, you know, this is this is the answer to see Lilius. But in turn, she ended up kind of being more of a Blue Rose 2.0, uh, a little bit of a more aggression enabler. So maybe we see a little bit more aggression here. City does still have two uh, two picks. We see the uh, the Landy come out and it won it for him last game so we'll see what happens this game 
Yeah, yeah, sorry. Just had a little quick thing in the chat. Okay, let's see what we got here from late side. Taking a minute here to pick his last two. Bunny Dom into Landy. Now, one of the problems here that uh, City will have, right, is that even if the buttons get pressed here from the from the Sea Willies, this is going to still reveal the Landy. It's still going to put attack down. At the moment, he doesn't really have a, a good cleanse, depending on, obviously, what the Bunny Dom has on her. Ooh, and so we do see the Fire Maru come out here. Now, that is really, really good into the Landy. Kind of was oh, cycling through a few. Guy. Hopefully, he wanted that pick and it wasn't a last second. No, I think that this is. I think that this is a fine last pick. This like prevents the politis. Um, allows for, especially if this is any sort of degen politis with uh, without a ton of damage. Right. Uh, even if it does have a decent amount of damage, you do still have the Ross mitigation. From what you said uh, about city, bigger buff. Yeah. I would guess it. It's a damage instead of like a degen poly. Um, I do like Late's, what you were saying, though. He has two. He has access to two Reach units for that Landy. And then last pick from City, we got the Ob Sig. He goes... Yeah, the Ob Sig is a really weird last pick, is there's right. not really a lot of shields here. Now, if the Ross shield triggers and the Ob Sig gets a turn, then pretty much whatever is in that shield or is Or maybe Hand Guy S2 is what he's um, banking on. But yeah, I do think that was yeah, a weird last pick. Yeah, you do have the Hand Guy S2. You have the C Lilius S2 here. Uh, however, again, with Guiding Lights, right, because Operator Sigrid's likely going to be on Guiding Light, um, we do see the Bunny Dom and the C. Lilius Banhouse here. Um, this does help a little bit because unless he triggers pro uh, Magic for Friends um, or the Ross S3, the Landy and the Operator Sigrid most likely are going to be sitting in that Guiding Light. However, once those two are out... Um, and, and especially if the hand guy goes and triggers the politis, LHC is going to have a field day exactly. with these squishy units. This is a nice setup. Let's see how it all pans out. I wonder if we will get some magic for friends procs. Yeah. Um I don't think you I don't think you yeah, you don't soul burn here. Okay, no counter yet. Yep, no magic, no friends. This is going to be an S3 here. Now, one of the problems is, does this Operator Cigarette even get a, a second chance? Well, that's a lot of damage right there. It was a lot of damage. I think if you are City, you potentially, yeah, Soul Burn here. Ooh, stuns the Meru. I actually don't think you rip the S3. Uh, maybe you do. So then you rip the S3, the mirror comes back, your A Ravi kills the uh, kills the wow. He's gonna get the Ross kill as well. Is yeah. Dead. yeah, that's gonna be a double kill. She actually oh, lived with one health. He should have I think he should have S3 ripped the S3, here, right? Yeah, no reason to uh, be safe. He's so far ahead. So here. this'll be this'll be interesting because if he presses a button, the Politus is gonna kill the Meru. Yeah, uh, you do trigger the LHC, but I think that with the guiding lights, the extra fifty percent damage reduction here is going to is going to prevent them potentially from dying. And not only that, Shogun, I don't think he can deal with the Ravi. A Ravi. Exactly, no. the A Ravi anchor is going to be too much for this Lionheart. The damage was yeah. so so much from City Side. Yeah, that Ross just melted. So Politus is dead, but. Politis already did her job. I think that the Ravi... Ooh, hold on, though. I think even with the Attack hand down. guy strip here... Obstant yeah, just S2. Yeah, and even though there's no shield, doesn't matter. A Ravi is easily going to be able to handle the, the, the dual attack just for good measure there. Uh, even if the hand guy was going to be able to get a turn. I think the hand guy versus a Ravi would have just been shambles right there. Yeah, unfortunately, also the Lionheart didn't get any, it was not on lifesteal. So maybe it was on um, a more damage oriented build. But even with that, I just don't think Lionheart, even like you said with the S2 from the hand guy, he could deal with the Ravi in the long run, especially because City, 
I wisely saved that skill three just in case to the uh, Robbie yep. ult. All yeah, right. yeah, you're definitely right. Yeah, because knowing that the Politus, even if if the hand guy would have been able to, to, to do anything, mm -hmm. um, would have just been able to clean that up. So going from a very st uh, slow standard draft into that more aggro style, I think was uh, was very strong from the city uh, city side of things. Yep. So well, well played, guys. Go. GGs to both players. Congrats, Shogun and City. We wish you all luck. We'll be rooting for you guys to take it uh, to take the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for uh, for coming out, and yep. thank you, Mace, again for hosting this. I'll exactly. see you guys in the next round. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Mace. Good luck.